the shape of things is now set and we wait with great anticipation on the 360 agenda. No Stevie J in the Friday night countdown. The injured cat out of the semi-final while Brent Harvey prepares to let loose for the Kangas. No Hayden Ballantyne for the Battle Royale in the West. A setback for Frio, but things are panning out for Port with Matt White travelling and cleared to play. And while those battles are set to rage, Hawthorne and the Sydney Swans wait and watch. We peek inside the camps before things get serious. I'm Jared Waitley, he's Mark Robinson. This Thursday night, it's footy from all angles. Hello, Robbo. Hello, Jared. All set? I was impatient last night. And yeah, no, I'm all right today. Okay. I'm all right. I don't mind talking about it. We've got a bit to talk about, though, because mm. we can talk about the teams and we just we just watch the teams with Dermot and the boys. But there's so much to talk about. Mm. I told you last night Stephen Johnson was not happy. Yes. Remember in the yeah. car park? He's been cool. chirpy for weeks. And he wasn't chirpy last night. And he's out of the team. Mm. Significant blow. What does it all mean? We will uh, we'll go through all of that. Also, because Drew Petrie is not the first man, to celebrate with the Frank the Tank in person. Did you know who Frank the Tank was when he did it on Saturday yes. night? Yes. Have yeah. you seen, I've seen Old, old School? school. It's seen? quite memorable. <laughs> Have you seen it? <laughs> Funnier yeah. than that is the streak that followed. Oh, down the street yeah. when his missus turns yeah. up. <laughs> That's quite unfair. I need to ask you, have you no, ever streaked never. at 3 a.m. in the morning? Never. Okay. <laughs> you didn't actually have to add the 3 a.m. rider to it either. What are you looking forward to? Choose one thing. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to Port Adelaide's response to their performance last week. Not... <sighs> Can they do it again? That's what, that's what I want to know. They're not going to be able to play with that freedom, I don't think, against Fremantle. But just those highlights, and those highlights that Mark McClure spoke about last night, that's in them. Can they, can they take it the next week? And if they do take it the next week, can they go the next yes, week? Yes. We'll worry about that next week because if they do get through this week, there will be a considerable momentum swing towards Port Adelaide. Yep. There will be. But this is a tough, tough road trip to, to Fremantle. But um, I want to see them. I want to see yeah. them and see what they can do what will they the do second next? week. Um, I could have easily said I can't wait to see Frio's response as well, yep. Fremantle's response. This is a game, mate. Yes, I cannot wait it for is, this game. It is. Oh, look, I've gone with how will Brad Scott's week, a momentous week in his life, finish? Will it be the football high to bookend the birth of his first son? It was the first question being asked of Brad today. It's just an awesome week. Um, you know, and anyone who's who's experienced fatherhood for the first time is just uh, would know it's just an amazing feeling. And um, my wife's been a superstar, and um, she's now allowing me to focus on the task at hand this Friday night. So it's it's been great. Uncle Chris will be more than welcome, um, or he's more than welcome any time. But the Geelong coach is not welcome until Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> good line. It was a nice way of putting it. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Yeah. Ivy, was that his name? No. No, no, Fletcher is the Where do I get Ivy from? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Penny's the mum, Fletcher's the boy. Why would you call your daughter Ivy? <laughs> it's, it's a son. <laughs> Why would you call your son Ivy? <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> Try to keep up. Fletcher, sorry. That's a good one. Yes. Yes. Can yes. you remember the your first? Oh, yeah. How long were you on a high fall? Yeah. Oh, um, until the sleep deprivation gets you. How long So for a while. Yeah? For about a week and a half, I reckon. Will he be scrambled? Will he be scrambled, do you think? Not that you've coached senior yeah. football, but... No. Have you had to be, were you presented with something that you had to do and concentrate really, really hard Actually, on? Actually, the first few days are the easiest to concentrate before they come home. Because um, they're in hospital, so you, you split your time between work and the hospital, basically. And the pub <laughs> and your mates drinking to yeah, celebrate. Well, I'm sure. Brad's probably skipped that this week, and that'll come down the track. Yeah. Did you have so... Did you have a wet the baby? <laughs> no. No? No. No? For any of them? No. No worries. Let's get into it. Sorry about that, everyone. Sorry, everyone. Top, top, top of the agenda, semi-final weekend. Just from time to time can be a little bit of a fizzer. The crowds are usually a bit softer and sometimes there are foregone conclusions. Not this time around. There's a real edge to both of these games. So in order, we look into tomorrow night at the MCG. It is exciting. It's why you play footy. Um, embrace the build-up. You know, um, it's 
pretty cool to go out in the MCG, you know, in front of 70,000 people and play a final. So enjoy it um, and you know, make the most of your opportunity. This is a, a feeling that, that we experienced as a, as a club in the last five years for the first time and it's an experience that the players are going to find addictive and they're going to want it um, more and more. Uh, we're not content by any stretch of the imagination. We've, we've always had a quiet confidence in, in what we've been building here and um, we'll come out and have an almighty crack and have an expectation of a very good performance tomorrow night. Everyone's uh, keen to put the pressure on somebody, but it's on everybody in a finals game. That's that's what makes finals exciting. Um, the Kangaroos will probably be feeling pressure because you know, they want to play in a in a grand final and, and keep going, and, and so do we. Yeah, we've got a lot of players who who we really rate, and probably not too many other others in the competition do just yet. But that's mainly because they haven't been playing on the big stage at this time of year. So now. They're really competitive, they're, they're, they've got great character and they look forward to, to the challenge of playing on the big stage. So I think you'll see a few players that will enhance their reputation hopefully in the next few weeks. That's the backdrop for Geelong and North Melbourne. The teams are going to play a key role here and when they rolled in tonight, the security of Chemist Warehouse, <coughs> Geelong out, Steve Johnson and Hamish McIntosh we knew. No Alan Christensen in the ends. So Brown and Lincoln McCarthy comes in to play his fifth game of senior football. He's played three this year, rounds one, two, He's happy 23. tonight. He's happy tonight? No, he's smiling. Well, it's, it, it's been lifted, he knew. He knew. Yes. He knew. He's known. Geez, it's interesting listening to people talk and, and, and Brad Scott and Jimmy Bartell. Jimmy Bartell, you know, he's been there so many times. It, it's all, it's like a script. I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying he wasn't talking the truth, but he just knows. Yep. And he said the pressure's on North Melbourne. And I thought to myself when he said it, is there has any team got greater pressure? Or is it equal pressure? There's one team who's been there for about eight years doing it, and the one team finally won a game. I think there's probably more pressure on Geelong. And this is only my assumption. Because when you're riding the wave, and you've just won your first game, and you've come behind and won, it is so exciting. You probably think you're bulletproof. Thank God we can't do it. We can't wait to get out there yeah, again. And, yeah. the, and the ability of Brad Scott, the coach, is putting a... Hey, hey, settle down, everyone. Yep. Settle down. I know you're excited. I'm excited. I just had a bloody kid. I'm, <laughs> at, I'm, you know, I'm crazy. But we've just got to be calm. But once they start, it's young teams. They can take them a lot of places. Geelong, McIntosh, Johnson... Motlop saw, there might be doubts. I'm only saying there might be, but how do you how do you how do you weigh up the experience of making the right decisions at the right times? But they're not as experienced as they were three years ago. No, no, and a lot of these players are yeah. trying to carve their way out, yeah, like some of North Melbourne's players are. And the one key in we all knew would be here is Brent Harvey, and Jacobs loses his place in the team. So Harvey, who's uh, against Geelong this year, he said he's known to get away from Geelong, but he had 33 and was goalless the first time around, and had 20 and kicked one goal the second time head around. To head with he was very cleverly played by Corey Enright. Yeah, he was. He, he went head-to-head -head with um, with Enright both occasions. I, I wonder, has... Has... Has, as Boomer's season has panned out and he's such a champ, do they change that up? Do they use Guthrie in a, in a different role? They used Guthrie last week on Jordan Lewis. Do they do they do something with him and lock down on a, on a Wells, maybe? Or do they say, you know what? We'll back Corey Enright against... Boomer Harvey. I mean, th th this is the stuff where I always say, wouldn't you love to go into yes. a opposition analysis, say, what, how are we going to match up? And then what happens if that happens, if that happens? Because it all can get thrown out the window, as we know from mm. last week with Richmond in, in, within two minutes. Where, where are you leaning towards... On a, on, a, on a professional basis? Uh, the, I've seen both of the games where Geelong have beaten North Melbourne reasonably convincingly, 20 and yeah. 21 points. So that's the body of work on which I sit. And then I always tip Geelong, so I don't yeah. really have to put much thought into so, it. So I, look at I think th those two wins, uh, round 10 and round 19, that's currency for Two what significant changes. Night. Two significant changes. Or Ben Brown's a better player. Yep. Than what he was four weeks ago. Daniel Wells is playing and he's playing better football than yep. he was. So there's a key forward and there's a key midfielder. It's a different mix. I, I, and I don't know how you define or put um, 
um, a description on what they gained from last week. Yeah. That's the intangible in football. What is confidence? What is self-belief? Because this is going to be a grind. Because they they, they grinded back into the game last week against yep. Essendon. If that happens again, can they do it against Geelong? Or do they come out and play the second half, the first half? Do they hang on as Geelong? This is what the testing of an experienced team is. Because mm. there's no blowouts, except for the Richmond game. There's no blowouts, mate. No. You no. fight, momentum, fight back. This is we're going to learn about North Melbourne. Have they matured? Tomorrow night's coming coverage here on Fox Footy, Eddie Maguire heads it up. There's uh, Brad Scott will be the special guest. Oh, I like this. Dennis Pagan is going to visit David King in the war room. How brilliant That's that. nice, isn't well, it? Well, who and thought of that Joel idea? Selwood feature. I'm not sure who's claiming responsibility for that, but that... You know how Kingy chirp, chirps around and <laughs> thinks he's pretty cool? <laughs> when he sees Pagan, I reckon he... wonder if you'll go the little kid Back in the to corner. his place. Yeah, <laughs> <sit down, laughs> Very <David>. nice. <laughs> so after the MCG, the Saturday night in Patterson Stadium, where there's a force with Port Adelaide but what will that be worth on the home digs of Fremantle? It doesn't matter what level you're at. When you play finals, whatever competition it is, the finals say that you've got to be a bit tougher, a bit harder, and a bit you know, just mentally stronger for, for the whole of the game. And that's what it does. And you know, and that's what happens at this time. At this time of the year in AFL football, the toughest, hardest and strongest teams get through. Basically, teams at this point have strong DNAs, game plan, how they play with and without the ball, and how they compete. So it's not about tricks. Trick don't get it done. Win the ball, make the tackle, and everything else take care of itself, really. No one's no one's foolish enough to say that we're not going over to play Freo on their home deck. That's not going to be a tough game. But we know, and we've got great confidence that we can bring our, our best football that we'll be right in the game. And, and yeah, we'll, it'll go down to the line, and it did last time, and uh, I expect it to do again this time. But we always talk about the past is irrelevant, and it's going to be irrelevant again. How we play is how we play, and how they play. It's a bit about... <laughs> Who, who doesn't fumble, who doesn't drop the mark, who sticks the tackle. We're going in the final series to have a crack and we're going to give it our absolute best and we think our best is good enough to take on any side in the competition but we know it's got to be on the day. We, we The stat that says that sides don't make it through when the game starts on Saturday night means not one bit. Someone's going to break it and someone's going to change it. Let's hope it's forward. Everyone wants to talk about footy in abstract terms and tactics and strategies. That's not what gets it done. Let's be really clear on that. Men win footy games. Men who put their head over the ball. Men who give great effort. That's what gets it done. Did you get the feeling that what Ross Lyon is talking about publicly is what he's been driving home privately all week? He's been driving it home for five years, eight years. If you're not up to it, you're out of the team. He doesn't pick players. Players pick themselves. If you're not going to put your head over the ball and you're not going to tackle, you're not going to chase, you're not going to get a game. Ken Inkley, same thing. I love listening to those two mm -hmm. then. It's, it's deadly serious, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So the Fremantle side of things, Hayden Ballantyne not in this lineup. Subin takes his place. Barlow is named. He's still in a moon boot. So it's yeah. never ideal a couple of days out from the game, but no, um, it's not ideal. He's in uh, the Ballantyne. He's a tough to bugger. Oh, he snapped yeah. his leg in half, mate, and tried to get up and play. Yeah, and he was supposed to miss yeah. two weeks with a broken thumb. He played. It's not much. He had his head chopped <laughs> off and missed a week of training <laughs> and come back. Michael but it does. Bolo. It's not. It's not all about whether you play or not. It, it's to what capacity right now. So Barlow can't possibly be at 100 percent, given that he's in a moon boot two days out from the game. You wouldn't think so, but uh, no, he won't be. He can't be. He won't be. He won't be. But we, they've got to work out. How, um, do you know the way I, we spoke about Geelong and North Melbourne? Poor just, sun change, actually. I'll just yeah, throw that in. Just swap Geelong and North Melbourne, and I'll have the same conversation I had about. Fremantle and Port. They split just... their games uh, and they're, the last one was two weeks ago with two huge momentum swings. Yes. Fremantle kicked nine in a row and then Port Adelaide wound them back and if it went five more minutes, they were on the charge. That was in Perth. Yep. Fr um, Port, when they were at the top of their game, beat Frio yep. at football park, at um, the Adelaide Oval. Uh, there's, there wasn't much between them at the end no, and there's not much between them now. We know Ross Lyon teams have got metal. We know that. 
And what we are learning about Port Adelaide, as they grow into the period of where they can challenge, that metal grows with teams. And I don't know if North Melbourne are at that level yet. I don't know. Because it just can't happen like that. It's a yep. growing mechanism to toughen up players. Ross Lyons said, this game's about men. There's no tricks. You can't go into the cupboard in the room and say, let's, someone else said it. Let's get the magic dust and this sprinkle all over because it's a qualifying final. This game's won on, on, on the years and years of build-up and, and withstanding momentum swings and, and high pressure and who comes out. That's why always people pick the more experienced team in finals. Mm. So we've got two informed teams going against two pretty <laughs> experienced finals teams. Battle hardened. They are. But is there a bat more battle hardened team than North Melbourne? Uh, sorry, than Fremantle? Than Fremantle. No, they're, they're they right. battle every week, they mate. Do. They they do. Like they, if they were Scotland, <clears throat> if the, they were Scotland, they would like the, the. They'd have wars every weekend. <laughs> you know, like the battle of. Um, give me a battle. Battle of Trinity or something. <laughs> you know? Right, we're going off to have a battle this week, and Ross Lyon and his men sort of crawl back. There, you'll be right. <laughs> Patch yourself up. We're off to. We're off to bloody. Oh, I don't know. Kill. <laughs> Kill Carney the next week, <laughs> and we're going to have a war with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what they've been doing for years. Yeah, yeah you lost me somewhere along the way. That's I'll all right. An Irish Sandy city. Robinson is hosting the coverage on Saturday night here on Fox Footy. Ross Lyon will be part of that pre-match. A Travis Boak feature as well, and the key names around finals time: Voss and Barrett and, and McClure and King and Healy will guide you through it. Good group. Let me ask you: How did you feel today when you heard that Anthony Morabito had gone over? at training it was a knee injury and the quote emanating initially was that he was yeah. in tears in the aftermath I don't know him but I know the story I didn't, I didn't bend over and cry but I thought oh no mm. really you, you poor young man it was it was you just think to yourself all you do is want to have a crack at it yep. whatever you do in life you just want to have a fair crack at it so when the news came later Jared a that torn it's, meniscus not an ACL. I was wrapped for him. Yep. I thought, oh, beauty. You, Never you, before you're going a two again. to four week knee injury being so uplifting for the football community. I ripped my meniscus. Have you ever done a meniscus? Yep. I ripped my meniscus and I thought I'd done my ACL. Such was the pain. Mm. So that's why he would have probably thought what the same thing. What a sense of relief. Good on him. Sense of relief. The preliminary finalists had training sessions today, so let's just uh, peer in here. The Hawthorne side of things, Cyril Rioli didn't train today. I don't think that's a surprise. There'll be a day, but today's not that day. Uh, Matt Suckling trained only lightly, and again, I'm sure he's just meeting the markers along the way, and he'll yep. have to prove himself at some point in the middle of next week yep. to make sure that uh, he can win his place back. And they got the, the stroke they were looking for was Ben McAvoy to be able to play for Box Hill to keep, um, keep that match fitness going so that he can be the replenishments should ill fate claim either Hale or Segler along the way. How do you think they train at this time? Touch? I would think there would be at the main session um, fairly vigorous. About 75%? Yeah, reasonably vigorous at the moment. Just touch like today. Yeah, and no get contact. Out there. Yeah, get out there. Probably be the one yeah, thing. get used to it. The Swan side of things, so Nick Melcheski was at training, but you can't be expecting him to be doing anything at the moment. Heath yeah. Grundy did next to nothing as well. So yeah. we know Grundy's got the calf issue. He played, he got through. There's no reason to think that he won't again. Yeah. But, you know, caution There's here with these days are utterly, you know, they're invaluable at the moment for these two sides. Couldn't agree with, couldn't agree anymore. And they'll just look in and hope that they all belt the hell out of each other. Is Bazza in, is Bazza in this week? Yes. When's he coming in? Soon. What's the next topic? Essendon. Let's just tidy up on a couple of the bits and pieces here. Robbo, you've been pretty firm in your belief today that Bomber Thompson is going to be staying with the Dons? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am firm. And more so than the opinion that you've held for a period of time? Or is that just an extension of that? Has something no, happened? No, 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 what... what? I've been saying for several weeks Absolutely. <laughs> that Mark Thompson's staying at the club and I know people don't listen to me, Jared, and that's fine. But I've, I keep hearing in the media, oh, I don't, they don't know what he's doing and stuff. And so I just thought I'd go out on a limb and say, take it to the bank, Mark Thompson's staying at Essendon. Now, I have been wrong before, as you know, <laughs> and sat next to me and tried to pick me up when I've got it wrong. Mark Thompson, I'll say it, Mark Thompson will be at Essendon next year. OK, the stories we just showed there are the, the vulnerabilities of Essendon with their playing stocks at the moment and the, pr the praying of other 
play the other clubs around the edges. So you wrote today that there were four clubs who just made been more, polite mate. inquiries. I think they were, more than, they were more than polite. Were, were they urging? Were they suggestions? Um, How they, were, they were saying, this is a really vulnerable situation for Essendon right now. We know that Patrick Ryder right now is 50-50. You know, he might even be leaving Essendon. If he leaves Essendon, he's going to go with the, you know, the drugs get-out clause. Carlisle was rumoured to be a person not happy. Um, and when, the, when it was broken last week in, the, in, in the both papers that the Ryder situation was very much alive, Clubs, quite rightly, said, hey, let's go shopping. He's 22 years of age, he's 6'7", he plays key forward. They, they can't be bought at the Magic Shop either, Jared. So clubs rang and said, hey, if, we, we, if, you, if you, he wants to get out, we'll, we'll go after that clause as well. Now, I, my belief is, Jared, that Essendon, if Patrick Ryder comes back and says, I want to leave, uh, I've got a two-year contract and he's going to get out saying breach of contract, Essendon are going to fight that. They're not going to lay down. They're going to fight that in the court. So this is this whole situation is going yeah. to get where I believe they're going so to do that. So it goes to the AFL Grievance Tribunal. <laughs> is the first port of call under the way the rules operate? That's how that will be the first port of call. And but how the I have. Essendon are going to challenge the AFL rules as if the AFL are going to bend on those rules. Is, is, the, is the Grievance Tribunal an independent body of the AFL? I, I'm not aware. Yeah, as the, as the AFL Tribunal. Right, so were you telling me do you believe the, the AFL Grievance Tribunal is going to upheld an appeal by Essendon saying, no, we're not letting him go. We've got a, he's got a two year contract. Well, I do know that their role would be to interpret the rules. Has there been a breach rules of the duty of care? Yeah, yeah. And then, then does it go on from there? Essendon says, hang on, hang on. We've invested nine years in Patrick Ryder. We've paid him great money. He's finally playing great money. Yeah. And he wants to leave. And if he goes, I, I reckon their fear is if he goes and it's allowed to happen, mate, just go and pick and yeah. choose Essendon yeah. players. I understand the flow-on effect of it, but... Uh, the system is designed, whereas if you do fail your players, and Essendon's own documentation is that they failed their players, mm. this is the actual, this is cause and effect. It goes to the grievance tribunal. If the player feels sufficiently aggrieved by yeah, it, yep, yep. Um, I think to step outside and then head to the courts, that... I, no one e wants that, mate. Everything can collapse if clubs do that. Yeah, I know. Oh, but I what is Essendon... That. I know you can't have it, and I don't want it either. No one wants it. We, we're sick of court. But what happens if you're Essendon and say, hang on, what if what would stop Collingwood saying, you know what, Dyson Apple, we'll give you a million dollars a year over seven years. And Dyson Apple goes, geez, I love Essendon. A million dollars a year over yeah. seven years? Yeah, I, I'm not happy. Breach of contract. I'm out of there as well. Yeah. I, I mean, the potential... What, my opinion is it's, it's more serious than that. You have to make the case more significantly than that before the grievance tribunal, rather than casually. Uh, uh, I don't that, think it's as casual as you just depicted it. Uh, well, I think that, that I doesn't think matter. circumstances do create a grievance, and we know writers' circumstances now. But, but some of them players might have hidden their grievances. They very well may And have. they might come out, don't, they might say to the AFL Tribunal, uh, the grievance tribunal, don't matter how I've been acting and how well I've been playing, I've been carrying for two years mm. this burden on my shoulder. Don't tell me I'm, I'm all happy and go lucky. They all have to do is put the facts down. Yeah. And the yep. facts tell it. That, that's a possibility. But Essendon are going to fight. If, if Ryder decide, wants to go, Essendon are going to fight it. And I don't know where that's going to go, Jerry, but I don't like the direction that it appears to be heading. OK, last element here is Tyson Goldsack. About this time last night was in the process of recommitting to Collingwood. Uh, he was one of the players who has been spoken about in the, the potential free agency movements. But basically, I wanted to stay, was Goldsack's quote. That's what it came down to. He's I've never going to go, eight mate. years now, and I don't think there is a better a place to play football and get the best out of yourself than Collingwood. He's a, yeah, he's a good club person. Forget it, he's playing for Collingwood. He's a good football club person. He's invested eight years in, in, in each other. He's not a superstar, but he does those things that make him invaluable to the, to the vibe around the joint, you know? Bucks laughed. He, he sniggered when it was suggested he was going to yep. Port Adelaide or wherever he was going. He goes, really? Oh, I don't know about that. You know, so I don't, we're going to have more of these rumours. There, there is a risk in probing your subconscious, but Ivy was the baby born to Dave Warner. And 
and his girlfriend on today. That's what I saw. So the babies That's were right. on the brain. Well done. The fight night, boys. Great uh, name, Ivy, by in. the way. <laughs> Dave, loved it. Sam and Baz to look into the clashes of the weekend. Awake on my Awake on my airplane My skin is there My skin is there Does that much bother you? Has that lived with you right through the off-season? Yep, yeah, it drives me crazy and, uh, you know, I, I take a fair bit of responsibility for it. I, I know myself that uh, I didn't follow through on my gut feel on that night and I went safe against a side that I knew I should have went after and, uh, unfortunately, that's that's what happened and that's probably drives me a bit crazy, yeah, to be honest. Handball to space. Christensen running on to it and Geelong are on their way to the Hawks. They're on their way to the prelim. So how have you dealt with that? Other than clearly stewing on it, yeah. how have you dealt with that well, over the last five months? Not well, because I don't want to lose and didn't want to lose. And, uh, you know, regardless of what game it was, and it was a final, but I don't like losing and uh, I don't want to be, you know, leaving something in the bag that I perhaps shouldn't have. And that's, that's what it felt like at the end of that game. I felt like the boys gave me everything and I probably didn't give them everything back. That was a Ken Hinkley grab after his summer of lament. It was the first day of the new season for Port Adelaide and it delivers them back to semi-final night. These moments do tend to live with people, Ooh, coaches and players alike. Cameron Mooney, welcome. Jared, Robert, Barry, Hans, all hello. Jared. Barry. Um, well done. Ken Hinkley is the sort of man to go after making amends, is he not? He is, and uh, he's one of the great motivating speakers and it's probably something I haven't said about Kenny a lot but he, he really is he, he knows when to raise the temperature or the tempo in his voice uh, and he also knows how to deliver a nice stinging message right between the eyes too but he's also a guy that will give you you know freedom to go out there and play and he, he'll be encouraging that this week no question we saw last week how damaging they were when they just played that a, a beautiful brand of attacking football we know it's all back on the back of defense but once they get that ball you know it's run and carry kamikaze type He'll be encouraging that this week. No Everyone talks about their offence, but you're right. It's a, the reason why they're there everything starts for is because they're in improved defence. They've surely. said that for a few weeks now, haven't they? <laughs> Every player that they ask about their offence, they say it always starts mm. with the defence first. So they're, they're very aware of it, and, and their mindset is, is certainly that, and that's that's a good mindset to be in. But getting back to, back to Kenny, you can just see, yeah, it, it is haunting him a little bit, but I think in this game, you continually learn, no matter how long you've, you've coached. And Mick Mouldhouse is probably still learning the game. So I think if, uh, you know, that burning desire doesn't get in the way of still learning the game, yeah, you make some mistakes, but as long as you fix them up, um, yeah, he's going to be better for it. I think he's going to be, not kamikaze the word, but he spoke to you about, I, I, I let him off the hook. He went safe. safe. Mm. I don't see safe at Port Adelaide at the moment offensively. Let's get it and go. Mm -hmm. Go. So he's not going to be encouraged, but even more so against what we would consider a pretty staunch defensive unit in Fremantle. Will he be encouraging it even well, you've more, got do you it. think? You have to. And we all know, if you go slow, wide, sideways, whatever you want to do, if you do, if you do that, you're not going to score. They're going to crab down the road. They will. They'll, they'll destroy you. So, and like we always say, you, you attack on the back of your defence. So they'll defend well, they'll get the ball, they get all their numbers down in their defence as they do because they're running hard again, they've got their run back. And they'll get their numbers and they'll run in waves. You know, it's, it's going to be exciting to watch. And can Fremantle handle it with their, and we said this last week, their two premier key backs out, uh, their barometer in Hayden Ballantyne up forward line, who puts on so much pressure with Ian Walters, he's out. It's going to be a hard task for him, I think. But can Port handle it? Well, can Port yeah. handle the, 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 the smother? Of, one, one, uh, thing, of one thing they struggled with in round 23 was there was a, a patch of 25 minutes where yeah. um, the Fremantle just they banged on nine straight mm. goals, unanswered goals. So um, if they could, Fremantle don't score a lot, so that, that's a lot. That's a lot of a lot of time that they've got the footy. They have not scoring. done that for a long, long time. No, that's if right. So that, that, if that happens again, they need to lock down. I'm sure that they've, they've spoken about that, that this week. Mm. That uh, if they get a run on, they need to stop it very quick. 
How valuable is it having played two weeks ago at the same venue? And this is to both sides, not to one or the other. Is There's no doubt that there will be learnings out of it mm. and adjustments made. And I would suggest that every club in the bag wasn't played two weeks ago as well. Well, I don't think so. I mean, you look, you look at that second half and did, did Port... Did they know that that, that fourth spot was gone? And did they not put the cue in the rack? But did Kenny pull the right moves uh, in the second half? We just see. I mean, how many times Fremantle went coast to coast in this second half on this nine-goal burst? Uh, we're just seeing here how many the players. You know, 15 metres off his opponent. There. You know, the easiness of the way the Fremantle ran the ball through. You know, the middle of the ground. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is that's embarrassing. You know, they're not going to get that this way. This isn't finals. That's not finals footy. And these are the things that Kenny would be telling his players. This is not the way we play finals football. And this isn't the way they've been playing the last uh, last week. You know, they... He wouldn't they put run, the in the rack. No, no, no I'm way, not saying no. the queue in the rack. He wouldn't be that he, arrogant. He wouldn't no, be that arrogant. arrogant. But I'm saying, no, but, but did the players think to themselves, oh, you know, we've, we've lost four spot? Did they psychologically just put it? I don't know. Well, if they I'm did, just saying, they this will they, not be the port yeah, that we will see this week. This game, they did, yeah. I've just, five unanswered mm. goals from port on the other end. Yeah. And they come back with a late run. So um, they, they come back at them. But they, he can't be having, afford to be having these psychological games. He wouldn't do it. We, 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 we spoke no, it to Chris Scott about it. would take those as learnings. You yeah. go, right, yeah. this is where it all went wrong. And then I guess the correction is in last week is when a team tried to run well, the field against watch them. Watch here, Rich, Rich, Richmond here. I mean, trying to go back through the middle of the ground. Look at the manic pressure that just put on here and the fumbling because of that this. pressure. I mean, look at that. That's need. Like, we don't necessarily look at need as a really hard in and under player. But here he is, putting that big contact on. Doing the doing the hard things, the things that need to be done in finals football, and I'm sure we didn't get to see the the, the Hartlett. The Hartlett one was yeah. the Hartlett one. I, I almost think that was the player of the finals mm. mm-hmm. last week. I thought it was just unbelievable. That's setting a scene for your club, and that's what they will bring this week. And I'm not saying Fremantle won't either, because they will. They're playing. They played boys on the weekend in finals. They're playing men this mm. week. It's going to be a hell of a lot different. So that illustrates that finals footy is different. I think you say there the intensity. Well, you know, you both yeah. played in it. We ask you about that. Mm-hmm. Don't it's sort of suggest it's, it's. You know, how much does it go up? You lose your out. It's it's just it's cutthroat. So desperation does go up. Finals footy is just totally different. It's why all the you see all the game plans through the year of teams that they like to uh, play a bit fancy or play this way. I mean, how many how many of those teams do you see them win finals premierships? They don't. Styles of you football get You have to play narrow. finals football, or you, pre- you teach your kids to play finals football from the moment they walk through the door. And you get them ready for that grand final day, whether mm. it's in five years, six years, eight years, whatever it is. The absence mm. of Hayden Ballantyne, and everyone will have a view on this over the next 48 hours. What's your view, Baz? Oh, look, the, the numbers stack up when they when he's not playing. Um, you know, it, it, it's far and away they they lose a lot of games. So, uh, look, he's kicked 49 goals this season. Um, when he does play, teams have to put um, time into him. They mm. have to put a play to him, otherwise he'll cut you up. Mm. And he contributes every week as a small mm. forward, which is which is rare as well. They're very inconsistent. He contributes every week, whether he kicks goals, he tackles, he chases, he sets goals up. So that's a real plus for them. You see the, the numbers on the screen. When he doesn't play, it's just a massive swing. What about his emotional energy that he brings to the, the team? Barometer. Yeah. You know, how, how do you, how do you, it's hard to judge that in, in footy sense. Mm. What there's a no player... Stat, there's no stat on it. Yeah, there's no stat that says, oh, yeah, he, he raises the energy level. When he plays, he seems to be a contagious sort of character. That when he does something, he, all the players get around him. He makes his players mm. feel good. Look, especially over there. I mean, the Purple Army. You know, I've, I've, I've been lucky How enough... How important? How important? I've been lucky enough to, to go over there and watch watch them play live a few times this year. And he is the brommer of that mm. side. No question about it. His work ethic, whether in attack or defence, is second to none in the competition. But he loves playing at home. His away record in finals is, is still a question mark on it. And it's going to be for a while until he proves that he can play away. But at home... He's the barometer of that football Does club. Ross Lyon tell his players our barometer is not playing today? Our emotional nut, nut no, case. No, it's never is, down to one player. No, no, but we're talking about it as one Yeah, player. I know, we can. Does he say that though. Look, everyone has to lift? There's no person that can just transport in and, and do what Hayden Valentine does to the team. 
it's got to be a different Walt, mindset. Is, is that type. He's that type of player. He, he needs to put on a, probably a bit more pressure when he hasn't got the footy. So he, he needs to lift. Players around him just need to lift that little bit extra and try and try and gain that loss. Zubin might be a better you know, you, know, you don't say to the group, all right, Hayden's not playing, so we all know. You might walk around individuals and say, Walt was, you know. Yeah, yeah. You've got to step up today. You've got to fill the void. You go to the next person. Yeah. You've got to fill the void. But you don't say it to the group. You don't let the group know that, hey, we're missing our barometer. You know, what are we going to do? Yeah, I was probably being a little bit silly there, but the point Not the you're first saying. Time. No, but the point you're saying that individually. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think, that, I think he would say that. Oh, you will go around. To put, you know, we, we need you. The responsibility mm. on you today goes up. Mm. As a try and get them going. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one player that Port need, and that's Lobie, coming up against Sandowitz yeah. and Clark. He's going to be two outed on a big ground where he can ruck um, against two quality ruckmen for four quarters on a big ground. It's going to be a, a real tough call. test. He's, yeah. gonna, He's a great call. They're going to rely on him heavily. Okay. The other player missing when the team sheets came in tonight, Steve Johnson, is out for Geelong. How do you read that one, Moons? Uh, looks a tough one for Jono. Um, he lives for this time of year, you know, he really does. Uh, I thought his first half last week was really good, just ran out of gas a little bit in the end. Um, look, he's going to be missed because he's such an amazing player. But, again, you can't worry about the one player missing. Uh, Christensen's missing as well. I mean, they're the two big ones for me. I know McIntosh is out. Uh, he didn't play really well on the weekend. Um, a lot of pressure coming on young Blitzarves now. He's going to be the number one ruckman. Brought in Mitch Brown. A lot of, uh, you know, lot's going to have to go onto him because Walker's going to have to play that second ruck role. So they need that second forward to step on. And we say this week in and week out. And I thought Walker was good in that first half. Fell away as a young bloke to probably do in the first final. So there is a lot of pressure on these younger kids. You know, Caddy didn't have a good game. You know, he needs to step up. Murdoch. Uh, Murdoch needs yeah. to step up, you Alan know. Smith, But yeah. they will because they're good kids. That's it. You don't know if they would, but you, your expectation mm. is they will. Yeah, I expect. And if to. they do, doesn't the mindset change on Geelong? Suddenly, the new batch is is is, is staking their you know staking their flag. Well, McCarthy's come in for his second game of footy. Uh, big occasion. He's a, he's a small forward. He's quick. 177 centimetres. Um, so it's a lot to ask for that young man. But um, what if he kicks five? It'd be great. It'd be one of the great <laughs> coaching moves in the history of finals. The one thing is, you look at that's what happens in finals. Yeah. Strange things happen. You Look at their, their forward line. We saw it last week. Brown had an amazing game. You know, silly young kid. He's going to come up and say Taylor. You know, Petrie will get Lonigan, and then Rivers will probably play on Black. So there's three very good key defenders mm. who are going to take their forward. So it's going to be tough for those guys. The midfield's the one. I mean, Wells, Boomer, Cunnington, Del Sano, Zeebel, Greenwood. I mean, he's the big surprise packet right now, Greenwood. That's where I think they could get them. I think get, they get, run, Geelong. get Geelong. Get Geelong. I oh. think they run run pretty deep in through their midfield, and they're be, becoming a pretty good, strong midfield, uh, pretty reliable over the last few weeks, coming up against the younger side in their midfield who, coming off a bad game, mm. who I suspect they will step up. But there is that uh, there is that you, doubt. You don't, you don't want to say it, but was that a blessing in disguise, Burma being out for a few weeks? Because their midfield has, has come along in leaps and bounds. Don't now, mind your thinking on that now, one. Now Harvey yeah. comes in. They did just, it without it's him. It's just a bonus. Yeah, yeah, they did it without him last week. It's just week. a bit of cream on top of the cake. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was an unfortunate incident, but it was a bit of a blessing in disguise mm. for me. Going into a final series, these young kids have to mm. stand up, take leadership of this uh, midfield. And they did. And they did. Do, would you, if you were coaching against Geelong, would you say, right, cut the head off, let's put a shutdown on Selwood. Let's just go oh, a, a lockdown. Given. That's a given. But he still manages to get through some. They let him go in the first half last week. Langford went to him in the second half. Does North say, right, we give our best shutdown and we cut well, Who is off. their best shutdown? I know Greenwood's done some run with roles, but is he their best option? He's a man that can go and get 34 possessions himself. He was himself. so influential mm. last week. Exactly. He was the one who turned it in the middle. Uh, we know Brad. Brad's... He's more inclined to go head-to-head -head with... Most midfielders. I mean, that's what he's. That's what he's done. He's never had that real hard tag. But I'm with you. You've got to shut down Selwood. You shut down Selwood, they lose. Spiritual leader, isn't it? I really do. I, I really know. think yep. that, mate. And I, I agree with you. The kids are coming. The kids are coming. Mm. But I don't know if they're. I don't know. But if Selwood's not influence, uh, influencing the game, who steps up? Bartel's not in the middle. Mm. Bartel's playing forward. Kelly's in the back. It's that group you were talking yeah. about that someone has to emerge from them. So Mark Blitzavs obviously has a, a key role to play here. Uh, Jared Healy, who spoke about this a lot on Monday night on the couch, and he spoke about it with Joel Selwood. 
I've been uh, really taken by the improvement of Mark Blitzars. I think he's got the potential to be an A-grade player. Yep. Start of the year, he had the potential to be a player. I mean, this has been an enormous exponential improvement. And he looks to me capable of becoming the next Jimmy Stein. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, Jimmy Steins was one hell of a player, but Mark, Mark's an outstanding student of the game first, and that's probably what makes him the player that he is. He puts time into his game that other players don't put in. He's got this uh, unbelievable running ability um, that's been gifted to him, mm. but he makes sure he, he makes sure that he does use it, and um, he's just he's just learning the game, and um, he will become the player that I think we all think that he will, mm. because the transition work that he does that you don't often see uh, being sitting on television just seeing the one angle, but I mean we watched a number of tapes where Mark saved us in many mm. occasions this year through his power of running that he's been able to do. So what's break even for him tomorrow night? Uh, oh look, I mean, Goldstein, he's only averaging, what, 12 possessions this year, so he's not a huge possession winner, but he's, he's hit out to the thing, he's hit, averaging about 34. If, if he's getting his hand on it really nicely, Goldstein, and North are walking out of stoppages, then it's been a fail. That's the big thing, he needs to at least break even with the hit outs. Unless he makes himself dangerous in other areas. Well, we're talking about his, his great running ability. Well, Toddy's a pretty good runner himself. Yeah, he is. We're not talking yeah. about this big lumbering ruckman yeah. who's just going to lean on, lean on him. Now we talk about, okay, what, what can he do? Well, he needs to step off, run and jump at it. That's his yeah. big asset, looks up. So he needs to run and jump at it. But Toddy's experienced. He'll, he'll step between him and the ball, make sure mm -hmm. he doesn't get that run at it. Yeah. Third man up is going to be very important for Geelong. Hit it on the outside, try and beat him on the outside. So a lot of those things are going to come into play. But if he can keep Toddy to, you know, 20, 25 hit outs and not too many to advantage, then he's done his job. All right. Yeah. Are you three catching up on Saturday night? We have yeah, got we are. a massive night coming up. Yeah, we Saturday are. Saturday night. I've got these two meatheads coming up to the Rattlers Hotel. The Rattlers. It's going to destroy Why didn't you invite Jared? Huh? Why didn't you invite Jared? Well, we might. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that all consult? <laughs> so he was three busy. Three of you at the he Rattlers. Yeah, we're at the Rattlers. It's sold out seats, oh. but there's standing room only. But we've got uh, these two, as I said, Michael Christian's emceeing and Dave Scalzo, the great impersonator. Takes you off. He does take you takes off. Takes you off. Gonna That's what I'm going to film him. I'm going to film him. Put it on the show next week. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I presume you'll get hold of him at some oh, stage. Oh, don't worry. No free drinks. Tomorrow night at this time, the second semi-final, Geelong and North Melbourne with all the pre-match, the halftime and the post-match analysis here on Fox Footy. The weekend forecast is next. Do Frank the tank. Oh, I don't do Frank do the Frank tank. The no, just for old time's sake. I've had right. as many kicks as, as, as Drew has. <laughs> well, Drew actually didn't know what Frank the tank was, so I think it was the first thing that came to his head, but a few of the boys after the game really just let him know who Frank the tank was, so that's his new nickname now, he's Frank, so <laughs> hopefully he can do that a few more times. So. <laughs> No rehearsal, and I was uh, just thinking that I had to show some kind of emotion, some kind of uh, up and aboutness, I suppose, if that's even a word. But at the same time, still knew that game wasn't won, so I didn't want to get too carried away yet. Um, but you won't be seeing that again uh, anytime soon. Frank the Tank is part of AFL footy now, but it's been part of the motor racing scene for a little while because James Courtney from the Holden Racing Team, welcome. Thank you. You've made this your own. Yeah, I've been doing it for quite a few years now. It's, uh, you know, once you win and get carried away with the emotion, as he obviously did, it, uh, you start busting it out. <laughs> why did you Why did you cho choose Frank the Tank? Why, why have you made this your signature celebration? Probably uh, I was having a few drinks with a couple of <laughs> yes. mates and, and thought we'd watch You were drunk. Oh, yeah. Kind of. No, yeah, in motor yeah. racing. Oh, have a look. Yeah. Yes, in motor racing, it's all about at the end, like Rossi on the bikes always yeah. did something different. I thought, why not bust out Frank the Tank? So this is him. Hopefully, I don't fall off the roof. One day, I'm going to fall through. But uh... <laughs> now, how does it compare, Robert? It's pretty pathetic. Really. Oh, no, I like James. I, what is that? No, yeah, it's bigger. Climbing on the roof of a car. I do get carried away. But uh, but no, it's a bit of fun. You know, the crowd really gets into it and goes crazy. Do they? Does anyone happens, say so. you're a wanker? Oh, you just did. But... <laughs> 
No, so no, there's some people saying you're a cheater. Oh, <laughs> well, look at you. There's some people, your team your team would love it, of course, because there must be a satchel of adrenaline to win a, win a car race. It has to be. You know, it's just there's so much, you know, going on, and at the end of it, it's, uh, you just get carried away, yeah. Not quite as uh, fast as uh, Will there, but uh, no, definitely, definitely Hang a good on, gag. What does Will say? Hang on. Oh, we missed it. What's he say at the end? You will know. Do you, do you scream in the... You know, do you scream no, no, in no. the helmet? No, 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 no screaming for me. But, uh, but no, there's extra bits to it. He, he does some other stuff as well, which... Uh, Are you married? I am married, yes. I was yes, going to yes. say, has it helped you in other ways? <laughs> no. no. No, my wife doesn't get me to get up and do it at the end of the bed or anything, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but uh, <laughs> Frank, <laughs> then! <laughs> just start busting out. A beer bomb comes in off the side. But, no, it's, uh, it's definitely a bit of fun. James, your, your <laughs> AFL expertise. I know that last year you won the tipping competition in the Gold Coast Bulletin, and this year you finished Stone Motherless last. Yeah, I had my, my publicist decided he was a guru and wanted to take it over for me and we come last but he's a Lions supporter so uh, so that probably Did answers the question. Did you pick all your tips last year yourself? Not all of them. I asked a lot of questions. And so you're a people. fake as well? I'm not a fake. <laughs> no, but uh, but yeah, I'm definitely not uh, Are you going to do it again? Are you going to do it again? Do you yeah, love I think footy? I've done it the last few years. So Do you, um, do you, do you invest in footy or are you just a casual follower? Do no, you have time? more casual because a lot of it's on the same weekends when we are. Yeah. So your games are shown when we're doing our thing. So, um, so yeah. Don't really get to catch that much of it. So you're in town for the Soundown 500, which uh, is really the build-up to Bathurst. Yeah, it's our enduro, sort of our main part of our season. So we've got uh, the Soundown 500 this weekend just out here. And then, uh, yeah, the big one, Bathurst 1000, and then uh, the race at the Gold When's Coast. When's Bathurst on? So the first week of October? Second? Yeah, yeah, second weekend in October. So uh, so we roll out there. That's a massive if event you, If us. we go up and you win... And That's you Frank's going to be there. Uh, we, <laughs> I'll drag you up. I'm coming Bruce, to the party. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've got to get the whole crowd up on it but uh but no it's it's pretty fun <laughs> it is uh play the weekend forecast with us james we'll guide you through it a little bit of motor racing with little, little, bit of little previews all right a do. sure thing james what's your sure thing for the weekend oh bust out frank the tank again yes. on the roof for me <laughs> and, and drew oh, drew does and drew, well. yeah drew can have a crack again he, uh, he turn it up a little this time put a bit more he won't into it i'll be great if he did it again it drew. would yeah he should it should do it everyone yeah, should have their own be. one it, it brings a bit of character into it yeah. and, and um obviously look at it's a team attention. sport here. You guys are... Oh, we're a team sport. There's still 57 blokes that work at, at our team. Um, so a lot of people don't realise how, how many you know, other people yeah. are involved in it. We only so, see uh, the driver or the yeah, two we, drivers. That's down. the unfortunate thing. We only, we're the only idiot standing up there doing it. Whereas, <laughs> at least with football, I suppose the other guys can have a crack to... Oh, well, I'm sure thing, Robert. I'm bored. Oh, like, I thought it was serious. Like, it's finals. And we're going from <laughs> you doing Frank the Tank at the end of the marital bed. <laughs> and I'm doing... <laughs> Rob, hey, my sure thing is Freo's going to lock down. <laughs> What's your sure thing? Uh, 16, 15, 111 is my sure thing, Robbo. Who's kicking that? Geelong has kicked that in both matches against North Melbourne this year. And last year, they kicked 16, 16, 112. If you, they kick 16, 15, 111, you're doing Frank the Tank on Monday. OK? <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, most at stake, James? Uh, probably Chris Scott going up against his twin. I'm a twin. And uh, his twin had a baby last week and my twin had one. So, uh, you know, the interfamily rivalry, for sure, that's going to be a big one. So your twin sister? Yes. What did yep. she have? A uh, little boy. What did they call it? Heath? Yeah. So Very nice. Not Yours, Robo, the most at stake? Geelong. Geelong straight sets. Don't like the sound of that. Mm. That's mine. Oh, I'm sort of I'm boring the... tonight. I'm oh. boring every night, but I'm extra boring tonight. <laughs> I'm in the same vein. I'm with Ross Lyon as the most at stake. Oh, how here. boring are you? Just uh, for the lock-in, just the same lockdown. The same lock Is it? Yeah, I'm yeah. working off your sure thing. Uh, right, a what's your doom scenario? Oh, if I don't win. <laughs> it's all about Go. you, isn't it? It is. It is it's all, all about, about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you. Are you a chance or not? How's the... Yeah, no, we've uh, we've been doing really well. We were leading the last race and the gearbox exploded. We won the race before that. Everyone says um, that. <laughs> we were, really, though. Yeah. But, uh, but no, the season's been going really, really good for us. So, uh, so no, we're uh, definitely a sure thing. I've got a good, experienced co-driver this weekend in Greg Murphy. Yep. Um, so, no, I think we're, we're in with a really good shot. Well, mate, I'm going to tune in and watch you and hope you, hope, hope, you, hope you win. <laughs> now that I know, I'll follow you now. Do you um, Robbo? Oh, Frio wins and Pav gets injured. Oh, that's cruel. <laughs> that's doomsday. Yeah. they got they got no backman. No, you're right. Ballantyne's busted yep. his jaw. Pav has to kick goals. And if yep. Pav get, wins, if Frio wins and Pav doesn't 
gets injured, yep. how in the hell can they win a pre preliminary? This seemed like the most likely spot for the silliest story of the day. Yep. I can hear Sandy Roberts next year broadcasting to the Gabba. There's a lion on the loose. <laughs> Did you hear about that story? That is no. madness. The Brisbane Lions are flirting with the idea of having a live, live lion, lion at the Gabba to add to their match day experience. Yeah. It'd add to the match day experience, all right? And they're going to throw a spectator into the cave, which <laughs> I reckon would be more thrilling than Frank the Tank. One more Frank the Tank to finish, please. Going on there. If we could, one more Frank the Tank. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> James, Courtney, good luck at the Sandown 500. Thank Thanks you very for much. being a good sport. Thanks coming for coming, mate. On Fantastic. AFL 360. Car number 22. That's <laughs> to go on Sunday. <laughs> Saturday night here on Fox Footy, the first semi-final, Fremantle and Port Adelaide from Patterson Stadium. And all of our experts in for the analysis along the way. You spoke to us last Thursday, you spoke to us this Tuesday. If you win on the weekend, you promise to speak to us again next week. <laughs> yeah, you're really that desperate to speak to someone, Robert. Is it true mm -hmm. that the climax to that game is now the centrepiece to your sporting routine? <laughs> <laughs> is it true? Yeah, yeah that's not anything to me, though. The ball's flying over my head. <laughs> the run on the weekend, right? You've got a piece of paper like this, yeah, yeah. and they're going bang, 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 yeah, bang, bang, bang. And he's looking at it, and then he goes. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I look at him, and then I watch the game. And then while they're in the ground, West Grimm for him to come back and deliver the next yeah. one. I'm about eight weeks post-op now, um, and my earpiece has just fallen out. So <laughs> I can't <laughs> sort of well, I actually had a joke with Langers after that. I was going to smother him if you didn't see me. Uh, <laughs> um, I've just had I've just had a beer and it tasted it tasted okay. Who was that? <laughs> Mason Brown. I think he's done all year. Oh. <laughs> A little snapshot of the week. So we're with the HRT now. We're with Holden. Oh, Rockets. no doubt. So we're with Melbourne Storm who played the final. Yeah. Hey, we've got a, a farewell for maternity leave to say. Now, this is one of the most important people in our team, Robbo. The DA, Leah Chambers. Is she here? Uh, Leah, when you run us into the gravel, <laughs> Leah buys us extra minutes to get out and get oh, the show she? finished. She, well, there you go, We Leah. will miss her terribly. We will fade to black. And sorry now. for all the Jarrett swearing between the ad breaks. <laughs> good, sorry good about that, Leah. Leah. There you go, have and these. Thanks for your efforts on 360. See you next week.